too. I mean, that's a nice yellow. <laughs> that's what you get for not biting, you punk. <laughs> oh man. Hey folks, Cam Trout here. Merry Christmas. If you can tell, it's a pajama day around the house. Well, because uh, <laughs> that's how we decided to roll this year for the family for Christmas. What today's video is gonna be about is my favorite yellow perch rig. It's a great time of year to target yellow perch. Around January, February, it's still gonna be a good time to target yellow perch. They're one of the great species you can hit in Maryland during the winter. So I'm gonna show you my favorite rig for yellow perch. Now to describe it, basically, it's really just two jig heads about six to eight inches apart. On the bottom, I usually use, it's gonna depend on where I'm fishing. It's gonna depend on where I'm fishing, what depth I'm fishing, but I usually use about a 132nd ounce jig head on the bottom and either a 132nd or a 164 ounce as the jig head up above. I know in a lot of other states, people like to use what's called a sabiki rig, which is even more little itty bitty hooks, little itty bitty lures in succession on that line. But here in Maryland, you have a limit of two hooks per rig. So this is really the most hooks you can legally use in Maryland. But with all that being said, let's get to the actual rig itself. Now you'll be able to see it here in the video, but I also wanna show you how to tie it. Now to demonstrate how to tie it, I'm actually gonna use a shoelace. And I know that sounds weird, but I found it's very difficult, especially with the four pound test line I'm using, for you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing with tying these knots. So for the sake of demonstration purposes, here is the shoelace, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to, how to tie a dropper loop because the bottom hook, the one you're gonna have your bottom jig head on, you can use a Palomar, you can use an improved clinch knot. Now, again, for demonstration purposes, we're using a shoelace today. Pretend that this end goes to the rod tip, this end down here goes to the bottom hook, okay? What you wanna do is start out, leaving it about that six to eight inches, at most 10 inches between the two hooks. First thing you're gonna do is double the line over onto itself, okay? From there, the end that goes to the bottom hook, you're gonna take it, put it through there. One, you know this loop I'm creating here, I'm keeping that open, okay? That's really important. One, two, still open, and three times, okay? So what you're left with is the top loop you've created, the bottom loop that's open, and about three twists on each, on each side, right? Now what I'm gonna do is take this bottom loop, put it through the loop we've kept open. And then if this was actually fishing line, what I would do is moisten it so I could get this to cinch down more cleanly. But working here with a shoelace, acknowledging that's gonna be a little more difficult, <laughs> what you'll essentially end up with is this dropper loop right here, okay? Now what you'll do is you'll take this dropper loop, this tip here, just pinch it, closely together and you'll feed that through the eyelet of your hook. And now that I've shown you how to tie it with a shoelace, so hopefully you can actually see it, I'm gonna do it with the line where it's gonna be more difficult for you to see, but I think we can still manage at least a little bit here. So the way I just showed you there is that you can create the dropper loop without the hook on. You can also do it with the hook although already threaded through the line if you prefer to do it that way. So we have here a 132nd ounce jig head linked to the actual gear. This specific type of jig head will be in the description, putting it through the eye of the hook. Now you can see where I have the hook suspended here on the line, okay? We double that line over itself and pinch. Then with the strand that's going down to the bottom hook, we're gonna put that through the open loop once, twice, three times, okay? So we're left with that loop at the top that we've kept open and the bottom loop where the hook is. So what we're gonna do is take the hook, put it through, that top loop, 
Now this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky. You have to be careful how big or how long you make your loop on here. That's about as big a loop as I wanna have, okay? If the loops get too long, like if this strand right here gets too long, then the hook can come back and hook itself a lot of times in a line, you don't want that. But again, moisten, it's especially important when you're dealing with very light line. Cinch down tight, okay? And there, if I can get the thing to stop wiggling around, there is your dropper loop, okay? Now, like I said before, on the bottom hook, you can secure that with, you know, an improved clinch, a Palomar. Just because it's very quick, I'm gonna use an improved clinch. Again, moisten, that heat friction will wreak havoc, especially on light line. I mean, it'll destroy light line and make your knots in your line very weak. You end up losing a lot of fish. Moistening your line is never more important than when you're dealing with some very light line like I am right here, this four pound test. Now, so we have our dropper loop and about, uh, about six inches down to our bottom hook, okay? Like I said before, I'm using four pound test line. Link to the actual line I'm using in the description. Ultralight setup, this is ultralight fishing. Depending on where you are, you can get away with heavier rigs. Some places you actually need those heavy rigs if fishing at really, really, really extreme depths. You know, like you're getting down to around 30, 40, 50, 60 feet. Sometimes you need a little bit heavier gear, but that's pretty much it. Ultralight rig, four pound test, dropper loop, six to eight inches down, your bottom hook. And again, I'm using 132nd ounce jig heads in this case, but it's gonna be dependent on where you're fishing, what that depth is, what the current is, what you need to get it down to the bottom. Now, what you're gonna see in the rest of this video is a day my buddy Jamie and I had out perch fishing very recently. Great day on the water, ended kind of tragically. I'll explain that at the end of the video, but we got into them. We found those yellows. We just about had a two man limit. And then, well, you'll see what happens at the end when I describe it. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get to the action. Man, that was subtle. Oh, yeah? Hey, little Looking yellow. Poor, but not yep. That was subtle. Oh, hell. <laughs> that, Jamie got something nice over here. What is that? Yellow fur. Wait, who, you snagging? Yeah. I mean, that's a nice yellow. That is good. <laughs> I lassoed him. <laughs> That's what you get for not biting, you punk. <laughs> oh man. We'll call him as we go. That's the good thing about this bag, we would call him. Grab that bag out of there, Steve. Which bag? The fish bag. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was very impressed with this fish basket. I'll leave a link in the description. Yup. I'll get some underwater shots of that bag eventually. So that's the trick, we've got a lasso on. <laughs> <laughs> that's a decent yellow. Let's go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice yellow. Come here. Oh, that works out. What yet? Rate it nine and a half. <laughs> We're gonna find you, fish. Uh, I think nine. Yeah, I gotta check, but I think nine. You got that basket back there, right? Over here next to me? Ray and Roger. Got him? <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, cool. Yeah, it works real easy. I like this. Yeah, definitely. In you go! Pickerel, where's that net at? <laughs> About to get on the board for the tournament. I know. It's a, it's a decent one, too. I can't horse him. He's not a monster, but he ain't bad either. No, he ain't bad. Oh, there no, she goes. <laughs> no. Oh, please, God, no. <laughs> uh, That's a nice one. Yeah. Son of a... <laughs> what we got, what we got. That's a good, nice one. Long and skinny. Yep. That's a yellow. Oh, That's yeah. a nice yellow. Oh. That's what we're looking for. So what's your secret sauce back there, man? What you do? <laughs> man on the bottom and just close. Like just an inch and then let it sit for long. You know, for... That's what I've been starting to do. Oh. 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 Gotcha. Right. He ain't bad. There we go. He ain't bad at all. Come on up here. Yes, sir. That's a keeper all day. 
Now, as you might be able to see here, folks, we're catching these on a mixture of bottom fishing with the same rig I showed you and fishing the same rig underneath of a float about six feet. This is deeper water here. It's down around eight feet or so. So both rigs are working, but eventually the bottom rig definitely won out. Your little beauty. In you go. Join your fellows in there. All right, fish, let's do it. I don't know why it's time, but let's do it. Double <laughs> my ability to, to gauge that at this point. <laughs> he ain't bad. He ain't bad at all. Easy. That's actually a really nice one. <laughs> That's actually a really nice one. That little fatty. Look at that fatty. Oh, yes, sir. Now that same deal, though. I really wasn't doing anything to it. Oh, what we got? What we got? <laughs> no! Son of a gun. That's my line. Hey! Oh, I got you. <laughs> he was running with it. Yeah. That one I might measure. He ain't bad, though. That's keeper, yeah. That's keeper all day. Keeper all day. Yep. <laughs> I gotta keep that on the download to get a sizable lead, man. <laughs> now, I've told you about the rig here, folks, but for bait, we're using essentially mummy chogs, otherwise known as bull minnows. Now, sometimes the yellow perch can be really particular. Sometimes they like the really small ones. Sometimes the really big ones. I caught on both today, but the smaller ones may have outperformed slightly. I love the castability of light line, man. <laughs> this stuff just sails. Hey folks, thanks for sticking around to the end. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And to explain exactly how this day ended tragically, you saw that fish basket, right? I told you I was gonna get those kind of cool underwater shots of the fish basket full of these beautiful yellow perch. That fish basket came untied from the boat. <laughs> and my other GoPro battery died, so I couldn't even show you that much. But that fish basket and all the fish went to the bottom of that river, and that is just, that's tragic. It's so tragic. You know, for the fish, that bothers me in and of itself that the fish just kind of, hopefully they escaped. I don't know if they did, I doubt it. Hopefully they escaped the loss of my buddy Jamie's gear. But we were getting ready to pack up and leave, and I was pulling the anchor, and Jamie's like, where's the fish basket? And I turned around, I didn't see it anywhere. And I thought he was, you know, jerking me around. Like, where, where's the fish basket, bro? <laughs> it was like, I know we got the fish basket, where is it? And he was dead serious. And we tried to snag that thing along the bottom of the river for about half an hour, 45 minutes. No luck, man. So we had a two-man limit, beautiful yellow perch. Ended up losing the basket and probably most tragically the perch, you know. It's, it's near and dear to me that if I'm going to keep fish, if I'm going to harvest fish, I want to make sure I use them. So seeing the life go to waste like that just really bums me out. But with all that being said, I hope that the instruction here, the action, was both entertaining and helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe, folks. And again, Merry Christmas.